Hi everyone, it's Lily, and today I'd like to do a review video on Buster Bellows. Now Buster Bellows is a Otome game slash VM that was released at the end of July this year and um, I quite enjoyed it, it's sort of like a crime based story game and yeah I just wanted to share my thoughts on it um, to you guys because although I did make kind of like a review type video before it was re uh, released um, that was based on you know other people's opinions that I found around uh, the internet so I kind of now that I've played it I want to be like kind of fangirl over the characters and stuff so <laughs> I decided to make this video but anyway, before I start, I'd like to note that although I would not consider any of what I include in this video as spoilers, I'm aware of what I think of spoilers and what you may think of as spoilers may not quite align. So I just wanted to note that I will not be including any CGs, I will not be including any plot spoilers nor character spoilers. So I just wanted to let that out there. But if you don't even want to know what the characters look like or you know anything like that, then I would swiftly move on. But anyway, let me start. So I will be going through the synopsis brief sort of how long the route took, system, that sort of thing, character descriptions as well as my opinions attached to them, who I would and would not recommend this game to, as well as a general rating and my kind of general thoughts on how I felt about the game. But anyway, so firstly, synopsis. Now the synopsis is kind of like about this main character called Tota, she's an aspiring journalist who's kind of you know, getting on with her life, looking for people to interview, to write good stories about. And obviously one of the, the candidates for this, I guess, would be Limbo. Now, Lim Limbo is a crooked lawyer who manages to, you know, basically defend any person, even people who are clearly guilty, who will manage to defend and prove to be innocent. And he's one of those, um, yeah, he's obviously one of the love interests and he's super cool. But one day, Tota comes across him and sort of witnesses his murder. So she uses her magical powers, which is that she can go back in time. Um, however, there is a catch. She can only go back in time a few hours type of thing um, in advance to when she is at that point in time. And when she does go back in time, she ends up in sort of someone random's body. But she goes up in time, that goes back in time before Limbo dies to basically prevent his death. And that's kind of where it goes. And I have made a let's play of chapter one. So if you're interested more in how the game sort of goes, then feel free to watch that as well. But so, yeah, I like the fact that it's not just she can go back in time whenever because the fact that there are sort of like limits of what she can and can't do kind of gives it more of a a three-dimensional feel to her character and her powers because if she could do whatever she wants then it would be a bit overpowered and would probably make the story a little bit boring. There are instances where she goes back in time and you know because she goes back in time into another person's body obviously if she behaves weird her friends the friends of that person are like you're really acting weird you know uh, back in this time and it's kind of interesting seeing the differences that and changes that her going back in time causes not on her but also on other people um, but yeah so that's kind of the synopsis and obviously then the story continues and you learn about Limbo and his friends who are obviously love interests and um, yeah, overall it's very much like, very much kind of like a Netflix series of crime and um, yeah, it, yeah, a crime Netflix series I'd say where murder happens and there's like bad things happen, gangs, drugs, um, illegal stuff and it's, it's all very action packed and high tempo and, but yeah. Now as for Roots, it took me so it's divided into the common route and the character route. The common route is it consists of four chapters and each chapter kind of took me between two to three hours. So that's kind of, you know, 12 hours ish to complete the common route. And then you have, you go into the character route depending on the choices you make in the common route. And then there's side A, which is basically the character and tend to getting through issues together and resolving them and either you know being happy at the end or definitely not happy at the end depending on your options <laughs> then if you get happy and you kind of get the side b option unlocked which is the romancy happy sort of looking at tota and the love interest kind of seeing them as a couple almost 
And yeah, it's, it's really cute watching the side B, reading the side B, I enjoyed it. But side A sort of took me about maybe five hours-ish, and then side B took me about an hour to complete. So all in all, it's sort of like 12 hours of common route, as well as sort of like six hours maybe of the character route. So I guess, you know, you, as you can tell, the common route is quite long. However, the common route, you can skip through all the different parts. And it's quite easy because in the system, you've got like a skip to next option, um, type of thing, dialogue option type of thing, so you can really zoom through the common route from the second round onwards. And um, so as as a result, it's taken, it took me about basically, um, <laughs> let me think, maybe about 40 plus hours, I guess, because of, you know, 12 hours, as well as the five hours or so per character, there are five characters, Limbo, Helvetica, um, Shu, Scarecrow, and, but yeah, they're five characters, so let's say it took me five hours, I'm gonna need you to go 25, it's like 40 hours, and then there's a truth route right at the end where you learn a bit more about where they live and all the other different characters, which was pretty good actually. So yeah, all in all, I'd say it's 40 plus hours worth of gameplay. Now, moving on to the character descriptions. So the order in which I played the characters, and this really doesn't matter in this game, you can go in whatever order you want and it really doesn't, you know, it doesn't really have an impact on how you feel about the game. But the order in which I went was Limbo, because he's a post boy. Then I went for Scarecrow because I felt like he kind of paired up well with Limbo in the sense that they both kind of covered the feeling of the world, that the underworld that they live in. Plus, I was least interested in Scarecrow. <laughs> then went for um, Mozu, and then Shu, and then Helvetica. Now, Mozu, Shu, and Helvetica was literally because Mozu, I was, yeah, third interested in. Shu, I'd heard good things about. And Helvetica was a bit of a gamble, actually, because I felt like I wasn't... Looks-wise, he's 100% my Otome type, but his character during the common route was somewhat questionable. So it was a bit of a gamble of whether I would like him or not. And I will talk about him in a moment. So firstly, let me talk about Limbo. Limbo is kind of like your rich kid poster boy. <laughs> he also has somewhat dog-like moments. Um, yeah, he was, he was a good character. Now, I'd like to quickly note that Buster Fellows was not focused very much on the romance, so from here onwards I will talk about how I felt about the game as an Otome game, as well as, as a, just an ordinary vision novel, because I feel like it wouldn't be fair to judge this game just as an Otome game, so I just thought I'd let you know before I carry on. So Limbo, the character I really like, so he, his sort of, his rich boy, confident, cocky attitude, um, his puppy-like nature, and you know, how he is, how he is with the main character is also sweet as well, I thought they made a really cute couple. Um, so as an Otome game, I thought it was good because uh, the romance was high there, you know, the, nothing really happens in terms of romance during side A, not really, but then side B came along and it was like, Wow, <laughs> so much happened within an hour, <laughs> and it was great. However, the story, I felt like it was a bit, I guess maybe because he's a poster boy, I still enjoyed the story, don't get me wrong, but it was very, uh-huh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Oh, 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 that's a shame. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, I'm glad that ha ha that was happy, or... Oh, oh, that, that sucks. Oh, that's actually quite deep. Oh, okay. If you know what I mean, it was very predictable and very kind of, there was nothing special about it is the best way to put it, I guess. Yeah. It was still interesting, but nothing special about it. However, the character himself was, I really enjoyed him because he, he, I mean, he's cute looking anyway, but he's got like the rich boy confident thing going on. So as a character, I really liked him. Now, secondly, Scarecrow. Oh... Oh, bless him. I mean, <laughs> so firstly, when he firstly appeared, like looks wise, he's so not my type. He, he just looks too girly and a bit too, he's been indoors a bit too long-ish. Um, looks wise, he's really not my type. But when he appears in the common route, oh, oh my heart. He's just so, he's so klutzy and flighty and a bit of a scaredy cat and everyone makes fun of him because he's such an easy target 
<laughs> oh my god he's just he's a really funny character so although in an otome game setting he isn't one that i would particularly be fond of as a visual novel he was he was good he was he was um he was really funny i really liked him as a character you know how people would always take the basically tease him and and as i said he's such a good target and he really made me laugh and chuckle so many times so and although his like story itself i wasn't that bothered by i i mean I, as i said i like in limbo's funnily enough i still found it interesting and it was different but and it was quite sad but it wasn't like it didn't grasp me now this could just be me being quite uh quite cold really and and I've noticed this especially in my discord because a lot of people would be like oh this route it made me cry and so sad and I'm like it, it didn't make me cry am I just cold hearted <laughs> I think I've just played too many Adobe games that sad things don't bother me as much because I just look at them as such a third person view but Scarecrows was quite I think quite crazy actually there were things that I didn't expect so as an Otome character he really wasn't my type but in a VM setting he made me laugh he was a great character there's three-dimensional a lot of unexpected things happened and yeah it was really good thirdly Mozu oh Mozu the thing with Mozu is so as an Otome character He's not, <laughs> this is funny because I'm limbo, I'm like cute, and then Scarecrow, I'm like not really my type. And then Mozu, it's not that he's not my type, it's just, I think he's asexual. I feel like he doesn't, like the romance was kind of on the same level as Scarecrow, Ge where it wasn't, it was barely there. And I think with Mozu, you do see him showing affection towards the main character. However, he, he does exhibit almost asexual behaviour where he, doesn't really have any sort of attraction towards, like sexual attraction towards the main character, which to me is quite different and something I'm not used to because, you know, usually there's always some sort of chemistry and romance between the characters. But with Mozu, he was very, right from the start, quite, you can tell he gradually finds more and more affection for Toyota, but because he's so robotic, it's hard to feel that connection with him, if you know what I mean. However, if we're talking about in terms of VN, his story was the best. It was my favourite. Like, I, it was a page turner. When I was on, in, on his route, I was like, oh my god, what's happening next? What's happening next? What's happening next? I just couldn't stop reading his route because it was just so, it was just so up my street. I love, I'm not going to say anything about it because I want you guys to discover it yourself. But to me, it was it kept me on my toes I really wanted to know what's gonna happen next and and the theme was it was kind of like a theme something that happened in the school and it was just really there were creepy bits about it that really left an impact and I will warn you that you know his route even the good ending like there is there is a, a shocking CG and I really I thought it was good and I don't mean it in like a I, I'm not saying like worry about it, I'm just saying it was one of those CGs that really left um, an image in your mind. So, although it's an Otome game, I, he's not kind of low on my list of characters I enjoyed. As a VN, he, honestly, his route was so good and I really enjoyed it. So that's Mozu, and he and he does make me laugh. He, he, sa he says a few things um, throughout both the common as well as his individual route, where he, it's almost like he he kind of can't tell the difference between um like dissecting humans and stuff and and like normal activities so so he don't do something and then you know Tota and the others will be like oh you're really good at that and he'll be like well I don't see any difference between this and and dissecting bodies and and everyone's like oh okay well don't say that because that's kind of gross <laughs> and I don't know there were moments like that quite a bit um that did uh make me chuckle chuckles so um but yeah oh i forgot to mention this is silly of me so scarecrow is very good at hacking and um computer-based stuff and he's self-proclaimed on the boss of the underworld and um, he always act, tries to act cool, act cool mozu is a coroner and he's like the chief coroner or something and he's he's very good at kind of um finding out why certain people died and he often also contributes in 
helping certain people by like he when he fakes uh, Limbo's death he you get a lot of help from him now the fourth character I played was Shu oh Shu I liked him so much and as an Otome game he was really good because there was so much romance in his route and it was really sweet seeing you know Tota and Shu and them interact and and oh he's just he's just such a cute character in every way normally I don't go for Kudele type characters but he's he's got a special place in my heart with Kudeles now <laughs> um so he's a killer killer he assassinates um assassins hence I killer killer and he's a Kudele character but he and he's a uh, heavy smoker and but he I think looks wise he was Quite, like he's quite my otome type and um, his story was quite uh quite <sighs> this is the thing all the stories are quite you know serious um, and his was quite serious as well especially you know how Tota sort of whether she kind of accepts who he is like she does but at the same time obviously it's not normal to know someone who's killed someone you know so when she discovers that she's killed someone she's a bit taken aback and isn't sure how she feels about it and um but yeah as an otome game character he was really good there were lots of romantic scenes both during his side a as well as side b so you know there was a lot of moments where you're like oh he's cute i really like him so i would if you really like romance but and you're feeling a bit like oh there isn't enough romance then play him next to keep you going maybe <laughs> um as for as a vn yeah i think his story was interesting too you know um it was as i said serious and uh i i think yeah, he's one of those characters where the more you learn about his past, the more you want to know and you feel kind of happy that you've gotten to know him because he's very like, you know, keeps to himself, he's very nonchalant, so he does kind of share things with you, with uh, Teota, but it's it's just, it's a very wholesome route with uh, a lot of romance and I keep on saying that because it did make me happy and um, yeah, he was good. Now fifth. But definitely not least is Helvetica and my favourite. <laughs> I'm so glad because at the beginning in the common route, I was like really disappointed because I was playing him like, why why am I playing this character? He's he's a bit of a dickhead and he's not nice and he doesn't care about Tota. He probably did, but he doesn't show it. And I was like, oh, do I really want to leave this guy until the end? Like looks wise, he's my type, type but looks aren't everything <laughs> and um so i really wasn't sure but at the beginning i did like just from his behavior i really did kind of feel something and i thought you know what, i'm gonna make it a gamble i'll leave him until the end hopefully i really like him if i don't oh well type of thing but wow he's got a special place in my heart like full stop honestly think th honestly throughout the common route you're just kind of like I don't know how I feel about him like he's a bit too much of a jerk realistically like you know when you get crazies like Yang and of Yoda yeah he's trash but he's special trash <laughs> because he's so unrealistic but with Helvetica it was kind of like He's a jerk and it's a realistic jerk and you're like, I don't want this in my Otome life because you already get jerks in, you know, real life. I don't need this in my Otome life. So <laughs> honestly, in the common and other people's route, I wasn't sure how I felt about him. But oh my gosh, in his route, you gradually get to know him. You learn about his background and it just hits you hard and you're like, oh, oh, I did not expect that from you. and. He's just so, oh, I don't want to say it because it's a bit spoilerish, but yeah, he's just, you'll know what I mean when I say he's just so, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, whatever. I wouldn't call this, actually I would, so I'm not going to say it, but he's just so, it's interesting because right at the start, you kind of think he's really a certain way and then in his route, you do kind of realise that he's not what you expect and um his yeah he's just got he's full of secrets he's really is full of secrets so as an otome game character he is my favorite like he's really good because he's just my otome type 
where he's a surprise. Basically any character that's a massive surprise to me is a really good Otome character. And he was one of those. Um, and his romance did kind of ramp up, especially during side B. He's always a bit flirty with Tota, even if it's in a joking way, um, he is. So it's nice in that sense. And as for the story, it is very much about learning about his background and all his secrets. And his secrets are very interesting um, to learn about. So even in terms of VN stance, like an average VN stance, he, he was he was really good and um, yeah, oh, I wish I could say more about him because I really like him. It's been a while since I've played an Otome game and liked a character so much and although he has his like playerish aspects which really bother me, I don't really like that necessarily towards the- I don't mind it towards the beginning but towards the end I would rather that were all go away but um so normally I don't feel a special attraction to the player ones, but I don't know, he was just, he was very... All I can say is that I haven't come across a character exactly like Helvetica. He was very distinct, like very distinct. And yeah, so he became my, my favourite. And he is a transformation artist, I suppose, because he's a plastic surgeon. He's helped lots of people. Um, make their faces the way they want to as well as change like his appearance in a way not not necessarily plastic surgery but change his appearance in a way to help the the other guys if there's any issues that arise and um so that's kind of his job but yeah he was full of secrets and learning those secrets one by one was oh so satisfying and so much fun yeah and then i finally come down to the truth root there are two truth root type things oh they were so good because you know, where even when you play all the characters, you're still left with questions from the common group, where you're like, wait, that hasn't been answered. <laughs> so, in the truth route, you learn a lot about other characters and who they actually are all this time and who what, what certain organisations, underground organisations are. And it really makes you question what justice, the term justice is. And uh, I'll touch upon that a little bit later on in this video, but... Um, it was good. It was it, I, especially the final route. I thought was it really tugged on my heartstrings. Um, I didn't cry, but I can see people crying from the final route, like in a good way, not in a horrible like. Oh my god! I wish I hadn't read that way, but like really tragic, but good tears, you know. Um, so I can see some people crying over it. So that's all the characters, or I guess route descriptions. Um, oh, and one. Uh, sort of noteworthy character which I have to mention and she's kind of like okay if Helvetica's up here in the character ranking she's like here and she's called Carmen and oh she is just so cute in every way and I just yeah if you play this game you'll know what I mean she's just cute in every single way and whenever she appeared I was so happy like oh I, I, I like you Count Carmen you're so oh yeah no so it goes Helvetica, Carmen shoot and then the others <laughs> so that's kind of like <laughs> my ranking now who would i and would i not recommend this game to so i would recommend it to those who want a strong plot line you know because it was kind of like watching a crime netflix series where you're like episode one this happens and then it ends here and you're like oh, what happened there i want to know more and then you watch the second bit and you're like Oh, okay, that answered it. Oh, oh, that happened. Oh, crap. And then you want to watch the next one. It's a bit like that. It's each, each episode is kind of in its own little story, but it does leave questions that partially get answered in the next episode and partially don't until the very end. And um, so I would recommend it to those who want something like that. I would also recommend it for someone who wants to experience kind of like a New York feel and with lots of cinematics and and I know I keep on saying it but like a Hollywood Netflix crime thing. It's just, it's so, the cinematics are good as well because the background, the like in sort of animations and and you know each episode starts with like oh in the next episode this happens type of thing and uh yeah so if you like those sort of cinematics and uh, you know as well as story I, i'd suggest it to you if you like characters that don't necessarily fit classic character tropes so although obviously they had their tropes like you know Shu was a kudere or helvetica was a bit of a player character mozu's a bit strange <laughs> 
then they had their, like, obviously end up in little tropes, as always Otome characters do. Because their background, their, like, sort of back background story is so well sort of made and descriptive, you don't really come across those characters, like, that exact type of character in another game. It's very... It's very three-dimensional. I think that's the word I'm looking for. The characters are not just two-dimensional, obvious characters. They they have a good story behind them and they're they're very they're just really good. I, I like them. As I said, I haven't come across a character like Helvetica. His, there's a CG inside me that it's not a couple CG, but it really grabbed my heart and that CG was like the final arrow in my heart and it just made me love Helvetica so much. So as I said, each character, although it does fit somewhat into certain tropes, it's not entirely so. It's very 3D. Now, I would also recommend it to those who are curious about Otome games but aren't too sure about, you know, romancing um, love interests, I guess. Because the thing is, there really isn't that much romance during the common route. There's basically none. And even during side A, you sort of see elements of romance. But you could, they could be, they could literally be friends in most of the routes, yeah? They, they could sort of be friends and there isn't really that much romance at suspect. And then side B gets unlocked. So let's say you play the common route and then you see a tiny bit of romance in side A and that makes you uncomfortable. You don't have to play side B because that doesn't really, that's kind of almost irrelevant to the story. So I think it's also good for those who want to get into otome games or want to learn what they're like but aren't too sure about romancing guys like if you're you know a straight guy or a lesbian that or you know any gender or sexuality that you're not into guys you can you, if you're curious about the genre it'd be a great title for you to get into it and know how like what it's like if you know what i mean so i would recommend it to those people as well now, who would I not recommend this game to? So obviously, I think this is very obvious, but I would not recommend it to those who are looking for like really, really deep romance. You know, if you're the type of person that wants romance happening right from the start, then this isn't the game for you because it is very just story. As I said, I would, you know, it's not, it's, it's not like your casual to me game, I would actually kind of, I could put it in the visual novel graph sort of category and people wouldn't question me, I don't think, because the only truly romancy bit is maybe towards the end of side A and side B. So, you know, considering the common route and side A isn't that romancy, you could literally see those bits as a visual novel with like small elements of romance. So if you're looking for something really romancy, then this may not be the game for you unless you're trying to get a break from romance. <laughs> if you're looking for, I would also not recommend it to those who are looking for an Eastern aesthetic. This is very much a game that's based in what looks to be a fictional version of New York. Um, so it's very westernized and you know, even the main character isn't like your typical Tommy game character. She's not very good at cooking. She's she's not exactly the most housewife-like character, which tends to be a trope that often is the main character in a Tommy game. So she doesn't fit though. She's very westernized, independent woman type main character. So if you're into that, obviously, you know, that's perfect. But if you if you want something that's a bit more like Eastern aesthetic and you want a main character that's a bit more um, feminine, I guess, with like feminine traits, I don't know, then yeah, it wouldn't be for you either. Now moving finally on to my rating. So I'm going to give it like an Otome rating and a visual novel rating because my expectations from an Otome game is a little different from that of a VN and I just don't feel like it's fair to judge this game just as an Otome game. So as an Otome game, I would probably give it like a 3.7 out of 5 maybe and the reason why it's slightly lower is because that there what well, there isn't that much romance in it but as i said that's not really fair because this game i would say was not made for the romance it was very much made for you know the plot line the action the the story the you know fast paced action and and all that sort of thing and so i don't feel like it's fair to judge it as an otome game however if i had to i would probably give it about 3.7 3.8 out of 5 as a VN, I would probably give it like a 4, 4.2 out of 5 because it was very solid, you know. It was like reading a good book or a good manga or, you know, or watching, as I keep on saying, a Netflix crime series. <laughs> and um, so I'd give it that. My overall thoughts are, 
I want more, I want a sequel. I know that there's gonna be a sequel in Japan, so I'm really hoping that the sales were good enough uh, in the English speaking uh, community so that we get the sequel as well because, oh, I want more Helvetica. Helvetica was awesome, he was my favorite character and I just wanna see more between him and Tota. Like, I can see their relationship growing so well and it can be so interesting and I just really want more. So that's kind of like my general thoughts and, it, you know, it really did, it was, I'm not gonna lie, it really did make you question, you know, justice. And I did kind of like a book club, and still am doing a book club type thing on Buster Fellows in my Discord. And we come up with questions that we can all answer. And, you know, it, the discussions became so deep. It was like, what's going on? Why are we talking about such deep matters when it's only an Otome game? But it, I guess it kind of goes to show that Otome games aren't there just to be played. But you can also use them in almost like a book way where it creates discussion and this one especially created discussion and I have had some really interesting interactions with uh, some of the people on my discord and so you know I suggest that you and maybe a group of friends like read Bassabellos and then have deep discussions, deep philosophical discussions about, <laughs> about the term justice because honestly it, it really it really did make you question a lot of things and uh yeah so but yeah, 3.8 if it's an Otome game, and then 4.2 if it's a visual novel, because as I said, it was lacking in romance, but it was really interesting. Some of the routes, especially as I said, Mozu's route, oh, it was like right up my street. It was my cup of tea. It was just, it was perfect. So some of those stories are really good. But anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and hopefully I'll see you in another one of my videos. Bye.